What's up everyone? Welcome to another YouTube Q&A. If you don't know about these and you want to get your question answered, all you have to do is keep an eye out on my Instagram. I post uh, stories every off day, so Wednesdays and Sundays right now, asking for questions for these. If you don't get your question answered this time, please be patient with me. We do get a lot of them and I am trying my best to like remember who's who and not answer their question in back-to-back -back weeks. So anyways, without further ado, as always, just answering them straight off the question queue, and let's jump into it. Okay, um, this is a good one. Do you think it's necessary to shoulder press or are laterals enough for medial head? Um, to be honest with you, shoulder presses do not hit your medial head a lot. Um, shoulder presses are primarily a upper pec, front delt, and tricep movement. If we look over here and you can see, you know, medial delt, when you're in a pressing position, that medial delt is completely out of the line of force that that dumbbell or machine or cable or barbell or whatever you're pressing is. The force is going down that way. It is pulling on that front delt and upper pec. And as we press up, we are contracting that front delt, that upper chest, and that tricep. There's very little medial delt involvement uh, with, you know, shoulder presses, as funny as that sounds. Um, so my recommendation would be, you know, no, don't not do them. They are great for front delt development and upper chest development and tricep development, but laterals are absolutely key to getting those round, you know, 3D looking delts because they are the primary way that we train that medial deltoid. The medial deltoid's job is to add up the arm away from the body. It's not to, you know, press it overhead. So keep that in mind whenever you're thinking about your shoulder training. Just because there are anatomy Nazis out there, this is uh, abducting, not adducting. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> got, got, got it, got it, got to do that one for the keyboard warriors. Um... Question is, I know you're getting used to young people asking questions. What advice would I give a 50-year-old lifter? That's a good one. Um, advice I'll give a 50-year-old lifter is listen to your body, but always try to progress things. You know, whether you're doing, you know, true bodybuilding training or, you know, just lifting to be functionally fit or doing CrossFit or calisthenics or body weight or this or that. You don't want to do things, especially if you know you just decided to get in the gym, that are hurting your body. You should, you know, periodize things, scale things, build up to, you know, doing bigger and better things every single time. Um, the other thing that I would offer is in your 50s, uh, life's about enjoying enjoying what you're doing for exercise. So don't feel like, you know, oh my God, I have to go to the gym and lift weights. Find something that you enjoy doing. Uh, for your exercise and your, you know, your physical fitness. At the point that you're at in life, yes, it is absolutely awesome to look good, but it is a lot better to feel good. So, you know, keep that in mind. Any tips on vacuums since you started working on them? Uh, a couple. Um, I've been doing them twice a day, uh, once in the morning, just because I'm completely fasted and empty, and I feel like that's a really good way to really get a feel for you know, pushing things and how far you can pull it in and really, you know, getting those muscles to contract and train. But I also like doing them later in the day, either after training or after my meal five, whenever I do have a ton of fluid and a ton of food in my stomach, because it's almost like, you know, resistance, if you will, progressively overloading the vacuum. So um, that's one tip is, you know, do them fasted for sure, but also do them, you know, at a different point during the day. And then the second tip that I have for you, and this is one that I've picked up just from watching other people do them, because I was by no means a vacuum expert. I actually texted Charles Griffin after the Olympia and made him give me the lowdown on it. So shout out to Charles. But the tip is do them in different body positions. You know, do them bent over, do them on all fours, do them lying flat on the ground, do them standing up with your arms by your side, do them, you know, like in an ab thigh. Uh, position, you know, make your body be able to pull that vacuum in different positions. It uses different muscles when you're in different positions. Okay, this is a good one. What to add when clean food is maxed out? Carb sources in parentheses. So whenever I hear you say clean foods maxed out, I imagine that you're eating, you know, lean protein and rice until it's coming out of your ears like four or five times a day. That's awesome. Um, my first thing would be if you are trying to keep it strictly to carb sources, 
would be thinking about adding very dense or easy to eat sources of them. Uh, things that I've used in the past are honey, um, jellies, jams, uh, fruit juices, you know, especially like orange juice, orange juice can actually help with digestion, but you know, really dense, easy to eat, you know, high, high sugar carbs. That's the way that I would add even more carbs to a meal that has gotten to the point where I cannot physically fit any more food volume in my stomach. And Lord, I have been there more than once. Um, if it doesn't need to be just carb sources, I feel like one of the best ways to add calories to a diet is to start using nut butters and nut oils or fish oils. Um, you know, there's a host of health benefits outside of the fact that they're providing nine calories worth of nutrition to your body, you know, with all of the, uh, omega-3, 6s, and 9s, and DHA, and EPA, and everything that they contain. So um, adding healthy fats to your diet is a great way to, you know, not only boost your calories, but also, you know, increase your overall health and, you know, function. Next question. How do I set a weight goal for bulk? Um, you be very, very, you be very realistic with yourself. Um, you know, you're not going to put on 20 pounds in 15 weeks. Anyone that says they've put on 20 pounds in 15 weeks, put on eight pounds of water, five pounds of fat, and like three pounds of muscle or whatever the remaining leftover is for 20. Um, be realistic with your goal for that bulk, but don't just have a weight goal. Have performance goals and have body fat goals too, because having all three of those with goals set will keep any one of them from getting way out of whack, you know? If you have a body weight goal and you're really quickly reaching it, but you also have a body weight goal and you're really quickly reaching it, but you have like a ceiling goal for your body fat and you're also really quickly reaching that, it might be an indication that you're putting weight on too quick. You know, so I would say, you know, have that goal weight in mind, but also have, you know, a goal body fat in mind. Like I'm not going to let myself get over this body fat. And then also have performance indicators in mind. You know, it's like, I'm not going to let myself get so out of shape that my lower back pumps get so bad that I can't train my back sessions properly. Or I'm not going to let myself get so out of shape that my leverages get way off for pulling or squatting or something. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Let's do one more and then we will call this one. This is a good one. Best way to go about getting gear, where to get it, and education on it. Um, I plead the fifth on the first one. I'm not going to answer that one for very, very, very obvious reasons. But the second and third one, um, I guess there's two, you know, asked where to go about getting it and where to get it. So I'm not going to answer the first two. But education on it. This is a really big one for me. Um, with the amount of incredible resources that are out there and available these days, there is no reason to just be pissing in the wind with hormone usage anymore. You know, it is your body. You only have one. Health is wealth. And at the end of the day, there are so many great resources out there that you can take advantage of. You should. Um, off the top of my head, the one that I would say is the best resource out there for anabolics related, you know, discussions and forums is the Train by JP forum. Uh, being in the UK, anabolic usage is legal for personal use there, so they are able to talk about it open and freely. He does have several doctors on the board, and he really has harbored a culture of, you know, less is more, get the most out of what you can, uh, health conscious use. So that's where I would send you uh, for, for knowledge on that subject. And the reason I took this one is you know, I do believe it's something that people should be educated on. I don't think that people should be coming to people like me, you know, pros uh, for their information and anabolics. Uh, they should be going to qualified people, you know, doctors. They should be going to people with experience with it. And, you know, you can get all of that at Jordan uh, Peters' boards. So, you know, shout out to him. I'm not endorsed by him in any way. I just like what he's doing. So on that note, I'm going to end this one. If you enjoyed this Q&A and want to see your question get answered, like I said at the beginning, just keep an eye out on my Instagram. We're posting the prompts every Wednesday and Sunday right now. Have a lot of fun doing these. I will see you all next time.